Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello everybody. Welcome to this new literature lesson. This is unit 5. The essential question in unit 5 is are inventions realized through inspiration or perspiration? As you know, inspiration refers to emerging ideas and perspiration refers to hard work. So do you think inventions require inspiration only or perspiration or both? As you all know, in perspective, in this book, every unit is divided into three categories. First category is whole class learning. The second one is small group learning. And the third one is independent learning. This selection or today's selection falls in the first category, whole class learning. What is it called? It's called Uncle Marx from the House of the Spirits. It's written by someone called Isabel IMD and it's translated by Magda Bogan. This selection is part of another novel that's called The House of the Spirits. It's an excerpt only. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to summarize the selection, recall some information about the author, identify the type of writing that this one is, and uh, find the meaning of the concept of vocabulary, conduct some analysis of the selection, answer the comprehension check questions at the end of the selection, identify the characters in the selection and what type are these characters, Let's get started. Here is the summary of the selection. Uncle Marx is an excerpt from Isabel Allende's novel, The House of the Spirits. During Clara's childhood, what happened? Uncle Marx occasionally returns from journeys to faraway lands, bringing all manner of luggage. When he comes to visit the house, he brings a lot of luggage, bags, animals, and unusual items with him. During these visits to his sister's house, who is called Nivea, he might be uh, he might bring embarrassment to the family. Why? Because he brings a lot of stuff. As he does when he buys a barrel organ. What's a barrel organ? It's an, a musical instrument. In order to publicly, not privately, woo or seduce or attract his cousin Antonita. He also might bring excitement, as he does when he builds a flying machine. What was this flying machine like? Let's see. Was it a successful experiment? We will find out. That flying machine looked like a bird. Clara and Uncle Marx, they share an interest, something they like to do. What is it? Prophesying. What's prophesying? It's the... Uh, ability to tell about the future. So they shared prophesying and uh, developed a special bond between each other. Inside, I in the selection, the house of the spirits is an example of a magical realism. What do you mean by magical realism? It's a genre of fiction that began with Latin American writers. Magical realism portrays fantastical events in an otherwise realistic tone. So it's like a mixture of magic and realism. The flight that Uncle Marx takes in his plane is an example of a magical realism. Let's go for the concept of vocabulary. You're supposed to rank these words from most familiar to least familiar. Word number one is decipher, decipher, invincible, contraption, newfangled, ingenuity, Improvisations. Stop the video and rank these words from 1 to 6 accord, according to familiarity from most familiar to least familiar. Don't worry about the meaning of these words because they are already explained in the selection. But I will give you an idea now. The first word is decipher. It means to, to succeed in interpreting or understanding something. So when you're able to understand something or to uh, interpret it, you decipher it. Next word is invincible, which means impossible to be defeated, and it's an adjective. 
The next word is contraption. Contraption is a noun which means a machine that seems strange or unnecessarily complicated. The next word is newfangled. Newfangled is an adjective which means invented only recently and therefore strange seeming. The other word is ingenuity. Ingenuity is a noun which means quality of being original and clever. Next word is improvisations. It's a noun, a plural noun, which means things that are created without any preparation. That's improvisations. When you read the selection for the first time, you need to apply these strategies. First one, you notice what you need to notice, whom the story is about, what happened, where and when it happens, and why those involved react as they do. The next thing you need to do is to annotate by marking vocabulary and key passages you want to revisit. How can you mark them? If you remember, there are five, there are five key symbols that you have to use. You circle, you underline, you use question marks, you use exclamation marks, and you put stars. You put the stars refer to the key ideas. The exclamation mark mean that you have a question. You use, you use question marks when you have a question. You use exclamation mark when you have uh, an expression that you like to use. And you circle the unfamiliar or the important words. And you underline context clues. The audio to the selection will be found in the description area. We will directly go for the analysis and entering the questions. And there's another solution to find the audio. If you download the application called Bounce Pages and you scan this page, you will find the audio. Uh, let's start with the background. Uncle Marx is from Isabel Allende's first novel. It's her first novel, which began as a, le a letter to her 100-year-old grandfather. This accepts draws on the Greek myth of Icarus and Daedalus. What happened to Icarus and Daedalus and who are they? In this myth, uh, Daedalus invents a pair of wings and teaches his son how to use them. But he warns them not to fly too close to the sun. Of course, this is uh, not real because the wax in the wings would melt. Icarus is too excited to listen and he drowns in the ocean after his wings melt. This story is similar to what happened to Uncle Marx because when he flew or when he used his contraption to fly high, uh, he was too excited to, f to uh, build his machine and it was a failure. So both stories, the story of Icarus and Daedalus was a failure and also the story of the flight that uh, Uncle Marx conducted was also a failure. What about the author, Isabel Allende? She was born in 1942, and she is a Chilean-American novelist, essayist, and lecturer as well. Uh, she has been called the world's, uh, the world's most widely read Spanish language author. Allende's novels combine elements of myth and realism. So she combined magical and realism. And she's also uh, and are often based on her personal experiences. So whatever she wrote was based on her experiences. In 1992, after the tragic death of her daughter, she established a foundation dedicated to the protection and empowerment of what of women and also children worldwide. Iron Day became a United States citizen in 1993, and in uh, 2014 she was awarded the presidential. Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. I have been in the United States for 27 years, so I am one of those successful stories of immigrants. And uh, I'm a writer. I have written 21 books, 18 of them in this country. So I have been very lucky, very, very welcomed here. I was born in Chile. I mean, I'm Chilean. But in 1973, we had a military coup in Chile, and I had to get out of my country. My, uh, the, my father's cousin, Salvador Allende, the president, was killed. And so um, I left my country, lived for 13 years as a political refugee in Venezuela. And then I had written three books. I came on a book tour to the United States. In paragraph one, as you can see here, there are some uh, lines that have been uh, highlighted. In this paragraph, the author is trying to show that uh, Uncle Marx had a special look. I believe the effect of these details is that 
the author wants to uh, us to read more about the exciting and this exciting and unusual person. Uh, I want to also to highlight this sentence here. Her reaction was not what her suitor had hoped for. Who's uh, this sentence about? It's about Antonita and it's about her reaction towards Uncle Marx. This sentence also shows that uh, Antonita was indifferent at all about Uncle Marx's reactions or emotions towards her. Toward the end of paragraph three, uh, the author here is using some details that describe how Marx is dressed as he waits to begin his flight. Why does the author mention these details? I think the author chose these details to show that Marx is promoting himself as, an, as a great explorer and adventurer. In this highlighted part in paragraph five, the author said he bought, that is, of course, this is Uncle Marx, he bought a crystal ball in the Persian bazaar, insisting that it had magic powers and was from the East. This, these highlighted parts, they show that the author includes contrasting elements to show that there are two ways to see a crystal ball as a source of insight or as a tool of deception and fraud. He wanted to deceive the people by using this magical or uh, crystal ball. These details add humor to the description and they help to further develop Uncle Marx's character. And that is the crystal ball in front of you. In paragraph six, these highlighted parts, they show that the author wanted to show the strong impression that Clara's uncle had made on her. And these details are used to build Marx's larger than life character, exaggeration. They gave readers a clearer look at Marx's character. Now let's go to the comprehension check questions. Question number one, how does Uncle Marx try to win the hand of cousin Antonita? The answer is he builds a barrel organ and serenades her. Question two, what does Uncle Marx make from the materials that he brings back in enormous, in enormous boxes? He builds an airplane. Question three, what special power does Clara have that Marcus pretends to possess? She has the power to predict the future. And for question four, it's about the summary. Let's say that Uncle Marx is an adventurer who loves exploring the world. He also craves attention and does many things to gain it, including flying a primitive plane. He is a romantic person. He also tries to win over cousin Antonita. He is a schemer with his fortune telling business. So that's a summary of this character. You should now go for the close, read the text. What should you do? After you've used the symbols, the question marks, the circles, and exclamation marks, and so on, you should now stop and look for the information that are missing. Now let's go for the analyze the text. Question number one, analyze. Why might Uncle Marx be the only perfectly clear image Clara remembers from her childhood? You need to explain your answer. Uh, stop the video and think of the answer, then check whether your answer was correct or not. Uncle Marx stands out in Clara's memory because he was a remarkable figure. He traveled the world and brought back many stories. He also created adventures such as building and flying in a winged machine. He also believed in her ability to prophesy and they worked together to tell fortunes. Question number two, what motivates Uncle Marx to undertake the flying machine project? Explain your opinion. What motivates Uncle Marx to undertake the flying machine project? The answer is he took on the flying project after coming out of a depression. What was the depression? What was that depression? Uh, what was the reason of that depression? It is because of the love story, the failing love story. And it inspired him and kept him going. It reinforced the notion of him as a great adventurer.
for both him and his niece, Clara. Question three, compare and contrast. In what ways is the barrel organ incident similar to and different from the incident with the mechanical bird? The answer is, in both cases, Uncle Marx wishes to be loved and admired. In the first, by cousin Antonita, and in the second, by the people of the community. He is not successful at all at gaining the love of uh, Antonita through the barrel organ incident, but he gets much attention and admiration through the mechanical bird incident. For question four, that is the essential question. Are inventions realized through inspiration or perspiration? Of course, you feel free to write your own answer, whether you support this or that, based on your previous knowledge and what you learned in this story. Now let's go for analyze craft and structure. It's all about characters. What is a character? It's a personality that is part of the story. A character may be a person or an animal or even an object in uh, all narratives. What is the plot? It's the sequence of related events and it's moved by a conflict that characters face. The story involves the ways in which characters experience and solve conflict. We've got main characters in the story. The main character is the most important character in the narrative. That one, the one whose conflict drives the plot. And what do we mean by character traits? They are the qualities or attitudes that describe the main character or the characters in the story. While he was reliable, smart, selfish, or stubborn. We've got some. Uh, round characters and flat characters. The difference is that a round character has many different traits, both good and bad. In contrast, a flat character is one-dimensional, displaying only a single trait, whether good or bad. The dynamic characters and the static characters. Some characters are considered dynamic if they change and learn, and the character that is static is a character that doesn't change or learn. Let's go for practice. What happens to Nevaeh's household when Uncle Marx visits? The answer is that Uncle Marx creates chaos when he stays with his sister Nevaeh. For example, the grandmother has to stay on her feet all day to support the fortune-telling business. Part B for question one. What does uh, his effect on the household tell you about Marcus's Uncle Marx's character that tells us that he doesn't care about the other people's feelings. Question 2a, what does Clara do repeatedly after her uncle disappears on the flying machine? The answer is she continues to watch his return. 2b, how does her reaction differ from those of other family members? The answer is Everyone else assumes he died. 2C. What does Clara's reaction show about her character and relationship to Uncle Marx? You need to explain this. The answer is Clara believes in her Uncle Marcus, unlike other people. Question 3. Iron Day doesn't code characters directly. However, she sometimes tells the reader that uh, what they say. Cite an example of a statement un uh, from Uncle Marx's story. Explain what this statement shows about his character. Uh, the answer for uh, this question, Uncle Marcus refers to the fortune telling tunics as the color of the men of light, suggesting that yellow is a magical color. This example shows that he is persuasive and tricky. Question 4. Reread sections of the text that describe Clara and Uncle Marx. Then determine whether each character is round or flat. In terms of Marx and Clara, both of them are round character characters. Determine whether that's uh, 4b. Determine whether each character is static or dynamic. Or both. The answer is Clara is dynamic because she changes. Uncle Marx is a static character. They are round. Both of them are round characters because they have many traits. 
He is bold and exaggerates. She is loyal and has a sixth sense. Uncle Marks is a static character because his personality remains unchanged through the selection. The selection. He continues his crazy antics and adventures even though they are usually unsuccessful. Clara is a dynamic character because she grows and learns from the from Uncle Marx's story, stories and her experiences with her uncle. Now go to page 460 and think of using these six vocabulary, six concept vocabulary to complete these sentences here. Decipher, contraption, ingenuity, invincible, newfangled, and uh, improvisations. Stop your video and think of the answers. Number one should be uh, newfangled. Number two should be decipher. Number three, improvisations. Number four, ingenuity. Five, contraption. And number six is invincible. On the same page, word study, the Latin suffix I-T-Y, what's that end with I-T-Y? It means state or quality of being. The author of this story refers to Severus legal ingenuity or his quality of being ingenious, original, or clever and resourceful. Use what you know about the Latin suffix ity to answer these questions. Question one How does the Latin suffix ity help you understand the meaning of the word ability as it is used in paragraph five? Stop the video, go to paragraph five, and find how does this suffix help you understand the meaning of this word ability? The answer it tells you that the word refers to the state or quality of being able to do something. Question two, explain what the word responsibility means. Then give an example of a situation in which a person demonstrates responsibility. The word responsibility refers to the quality of being responsible or to something for which one can be responsible. Taking care of a pet would be one example of responsibility. The last thing in this uh, selection is uh, convention, subject complement. Uh, in order to understand subject complements, first thing you need to know what is a linking verb. You all know that a, a linking verb connects the subject to a subject complement. A subject complement is a noun or a pronoun or an adjective that follows a linking verb and tells something about it. The most common linking verbs are these ones. B, such as am and is and are and was and where and so on. Other verbs that function as linking verbs are also are these ones. Seem, look, feel, become and grow and appear. There are three types of subject complements. Either a predicate noun or predicate pronoun. That's also pre called predicate nominative. So predicate noun and predicate pronoun are called predicate nominatives. They follow a linking verb and identify or rename the subject of a sentence. For example here, Ronnie became the captain of the team. Became here is a linking verb. Captain is a noun, so it renames Ronnie. In this case here, captain. Captain is a predicate noun. Next example, a predicate adjective. What's a predicate adjective? It's an adjective that comes after a linking verb and it describes the subject of the sentence. For example, the winners are they. They here is a subject pronoun that considered predicate nominative. The fight to uh, Houston seemed swift. Swift is an adjective that describes the fight. So this is here a predicate adjective. On page 461, identify the predicate noun, pronoun, or adjective in each sentence. Number one, the man who returned was really he, alive and wet. Number two, Clara is a genuine fortune teller. Number three, or C, letter C, when Uncle Marx leaves, Clara grows upset. In the first example here, the predicate pronoun, he identifies the subject, which is the man. In example B, the predicate noun fortune teller renames the subject, Clara. And in question C, or letter C, the predicate adjective upset tells something about the subject who is Clara. For the second question, you need to read reread paragraph two of Uncle Marx, then find and label at least one predicate noun and one predicate adjective. Uh, rewrite. Fill in each of the following sentences with a predicate noun or a phrase that indicates or includes a predicate noun.
number one or letter A Uncle Marx is so think of a noun adventurer uh, an inventor whatever so think of a noun here uh, question B Clara is the uh, think of a definition of Clara Clara is for example a person who cares most about Uncle Marx so question two uh, fill in each of the following sentences with a predicate adjective A when he works on his inventions Uncle Marx seems Think of any adjective determined uh, B the character of Clara appears mature for her age or smart or whatever you want to use to describe and here we come to the end of this selection